know they watching, I'ma make them sweat. Put your money down, place your bet. Degenerate, yeah, I'm a sicko. Who else gonna get you to the window? I know they watching, I'ma make them sweat. Put your money down, place your bet. Hey, yo, welcome to Graybo's Giblets, part of the NoOffSeason.com Sports Card Network. We know you don't have 40 hours a week to pour over podcasts and spreadsheets to handicap these games yourself. We do that for you. Bring you our picks each week so you can have some confidence heading into the weekend or walking up to the window. We are literally out here dropping giblets, people. And we might drop a few giblets about sports cards while we're here. I am your host today, Denny One Time, joined by the Logo Man, one of the best college basketball minds to grace Western Henrico, Gray Burnett. Graybo, how you feeling? I feel good. It is setting up to be a fantastic Sweet 16 chalk hit, but that means these games are going to be awesome this weekend. Can't wait to break down the Sweet 16 and Elite Eight. I'm loving these matchups. Uh, loving it. Did you enjoy your your March Madness Week One? I did. Nothing better than Calipari getting beat uh, by Oakland, uh, sweetheart Goki, just knocking down every three. That was awesome to watch. Um, Love the Oregon Creighton double over time. Oregon tried to do it with like two players. That's it. They were the only two players that scored the entire second half of their team. That was amazing to watch. And they ran out of they ran out of gas at the end, but that was a great game. We had Yale, the Ivy League does it again. Knocks out a power five. I would say a top five team according to all the rankings in Auburn. That was nuts. Um and then the Houston A and M game was a great way to finish it. Uh Gives me some uh, some doubt about Houston coming into to Duke this week, uh, but I, I, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that. Yeah, don't forget a Market Movers. You can save twenty percent after a free fourteen day trial. Visit MarketMoversApp dot com and use the promo code No Off Season. So Greg gave a little rundown of Week One, first round and second round storylines. Um, you know, I think obviously the the goal key uh, Oakland uh, story and game was amazing. Um, DJ Burns, NC State, what a great story! It's been it's been really fun watching ACC. Them. Let's give ACC some credit. Besides Virginia, let's give them some credit. Yeah, not uh, other than Virginia, the ACC was eight and zero over the weekend, which surprised a lot of people. I think we were certainly surprised a little bit by Clemson, um, but you know the other three ACC schools looked pretty good as well. Um, I would say like uh, my kind of summary of of week one, in addition to what you just said. I thought Dayton's comeback in round one was pretty cool um, for our, our boy Timmy. Um, let's see, the schools that let us down based on last week's podcast, McNeese, CYU, and Drake. Yeah, Drake, uh, Drake hurt up eight about five minutes ago. Uh, credit Washington State. They had some athletes who played really well down the stretch, and uh, they outplayed Drake at the end. Uh, yeah, I thought Drake would go far. Uh, McNeese. Should have looked at their schedule more. <laughs> they had a conference schedule. <laughs> uh, and then their conference schedule, you know, they didn't really play anybody, and then they finally play a big dog, and that's what happened. Uh, can't, can't fault them for that. Uh, and then BYU, that was, that was probably one of the biggest upsets. Duquesne coming there and, and beating BYU, I was very shocked about that. That was one of the first games at the bar we were sitting in. And BYU makes an awesome comeback, but just couldn't get over that hump. Yeah. So this is the last March Madness Week One that we will not watch at Parlay, our that's sports right. bar that's opening next to Graybo Sports. Everyone Cards. knows where we're going to be every year for an hour for the next forty years. We don't have to text each other. You don't have to call. We yeah, just show up. That's correct. Uh, well, um, so yes, yeah, so for the most part, you know, round one we had your your share of upsets, a fourteen, a thirteen, some twelves, and then three of the eleven seeds won. Nothing too crazy though. And then round two, chalk pretty much held, with the exception of maybe Clemson. Um, so, uh, the team's looking good, I would say. Like, you kind of not really surprising for some of these, but obviously, UConn rolled, Purdue rolled, Wagon. UNC, I think, surprised some people of how they came, were down and kind of handled Michigan State after that. Then, how about Gonzaga and Duke? Did they surprise you at all, those two? Gonzaga more than Duke. I, I'll, I'll give Duke credit. All right. Duke has played well both games, or shot the lights out both games. But also, you know, playing a Vermont um, and then playing the 12 seed who, who they just believe. 
Lincoln. JMU. JMU beat JMU, got off to a good start. JMU's best player had 2,000 the first two minutes. Uh, now they got a Houston team, uh, which everyone talks about how Duke is soft. Now you're playing Houston, who's all about hustle and banging you around when you come in the paint. So it's going to be air- very interesting to see how Filipowski uh, plays <laughs> this week against Houston and how they shoot against one of the best defenses in the league. And I'll give Duke credit. They are playing well, so I'm looking forward to that matchup. But my team, I think, that deserves all the credit right now is Gonzaga has been one of the best te- best offenses I've seen in this tournament. They're starting to play some defense. The way they came out against Kansas in the second half – was awesome. Their blowout against McNeese, they were on fire. That game against Purdue is going to be awesome. You know Purdue beat them in Maui uh, by a couple points. Um, So that's going to be a great – that's probably the game I'm looking forward to the most because Purdue absolutely dismantled Utah State. Uh, So can't wait to uh, watch that game. And then North Carolina, like you said, looks very well. Looks very good. Um. Definitely a good win against Michigan State. When at the beginning we were like, okay, is Izzo going to do it again? And then UNC just turned it on. They have done that all season. Yeah, I think that's what you've heard Jay Bellis talk about it, and Hubert's talked about it about UNC's kind of toughness or poise. They didn't they didn't get rattled when, when they were down twelve right out of the gate, and I think that's gonna gonna help them down the stretch. All right, so let's get into this week our Sweet Sixteen games. We're gonna look at each of the eight games against the spread. And I'm uh, going to get Graybo's pick. I'll chime in with my pick. So let's go down the line. Starting on Thursday, Clemson getting seven and a half against Arizona. We talk about this scheduling, Fit. <laughs> Fitz is here to shake. His I am head never the one to, the to, to notice or care about things like that, but I'm with Fitz. Saturday scheduling, Sunday scheduling, the, how late these games are starting this week. It is freaking atrocious. I think they should just like have some kind of tape it. delay on the West Coast where they freeze the internet for three hours and they, they can watch it three hours after us, but it is so dumb. I get if Illinois and Iowa State were playing out West. They are playing in Massachusetts, the East Coast, and they're playing at 10 o'clock at night. Yeah. They don't want to play. What, what is going on? I mean, it's your ridiculous. biorhythms are all messed up. Like, I mean, if you're like me, you, you used to go to bed at 930 and you have to play until midnight, like, whatever. Their kids are young, but all right. So let's, let's get let's into uh, let's do it. Clemson getting Nothing seven and a half. That. Against Arizona. Who you got? Greg? All right. Clemson's getting seven and a half. Now, we didn't think Clemson would get here. Everyone had New Mexico was was favorites and they absolutely destroyed them. PJ Hall, unfortunately, I think is not gonna be able to stay on the court. He always gets in foul trouble. They, for Clemson, they need PJ Hall to stay on the court. I really like zone in this game. I think I'm gonna pass on the on the spread and betting the spread. I think Clemson might be able to cover that. But I think Arizona down the stretch is gonna be too much inside with Balo. Um, and Johnson, and then they also have Caleb Love, and Caleb Love is shooting the ball very well in this tournament. He shot the ball well in the Pac-12 tournament. I think Clemson's going to have a hard time. Clemson also has a player on their team, this Shefflin kid. Uh, looks like looks like me out there. Looks like he would not be good at basketball, and he is unbelievable. That kid does it all. I mean, I was talking with Fitz, and he was like, that he had probably like four blocks, eleven rebounds, eleven points. And I gotta give I gotta give Clemson and their coaching staff credit. They have been awesome this tournament, and I hope they continue to to, to play hard and play well against this Arizona team. I think it's just going to be too much. Yeah, I I'm actually only going to bet two of these eight games this week. This is not one of them. If you put a gun to my head, I would take Arizona, uh, but I don't feel passionate about it. All right, next up, San Diego State versus UConn rematch of last year's. National championship. championship game, and yeah. UConn would have covered this last year. Yeah, they would have. I so can, what, I cannot what believe it's eleven. Yeah, we got a one versus five, and and it's a UConn is eleven point favorites. That is kind of how they're. Are you but, rushing? Are you rushing to take the points though? Um, no, I'm not. Yeah, I think San Diego State will will slow them down. I think UConn is going to come back to earth a little bit with the shooting. I do think UConn is going to win. I think UConn is going to roll to the Final Four. I really do, but that is a lot of points. I, I'm gonna can they cover that? Yeah, but so I'm gonna stay away. I'm not gonna. That that's a trap for me. That 11. I think UConn wins this game, but San Diego State, time and time again, we always want to bet against them. We always want to pick against them, and they they show up, man. They show up, and they got an All American in Ladi, who can match up with Klingen inside. So if he gets Klingen in foul trouble, Ladi is. 
going to be hard to stop. So they need Cl- UConn needs Klingon in on the court for sure. Yeah, I'm I'm passing here slightly towards UConn for me, uh, laying 11. Okay, next game. I am betting this one. Okay. Bama versus UNC, minus four. Oh, all right. I want to get your take before. I, 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 who are you betting? Because I'm definitely taking this game too. I am taking the Tar Heels. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. We riding Fitz. We riding. Fitz, we riding UNC minus four. All day. Fitz is nodding. Okay, awesome. I, I think Bama are frauds. If you watch that Bama Grand Canyon game, I wanted to throw up every possession. I, if Grand Canyon like had any sort of offense, they would have won that game. It was absolutely atrocious to watch. They shot probably 10%. They had some freak athletes, but terribly coached. Cannot believe that was their style against a team that wants that. It was the Bama wants to to go, and they want to run, and they wanna, it wants to be a playground game, and they got a playground game. UNC is going to slow them down. UNC actually plays defense. UNC's offense is good. They're not going to let Bama get on the offensive rebounds. UNC is getting uh, only get is favored by four. I love this UNC by ten. They're rolling Bama. Bama's the most overrated team in the Sweet Sixteen, in my opinion. Uh, Barkley watching that game said, "It's just dumb. It's just <laughs> dumb." You saw that? Yeah. How how that game Absolutely was betrayed. playing? It's so funny too because you and your dad being basketball coaches, I can understand why you're purist and you hate that <laughs> sloppy style. But yeah. but my wife, your sister who's not a basketball coach must be in her must be in your blood the burnett blood because it was stressing her out yeah. she yeah, was, she was really screaming does. at the tv to just calm down she was like just calm down uh, it was a very stressful game all right so let's we're both taking uh the tar heels let's head to the two three matchup a tight one here oh, illinois yeah. is getting one and a half from iowa state what say love you this game love this game illinois has been blitzing people now they played morehead state and they played duquesne in the second round but they have one of the best players in the country I think he is the best player in the country at this time right now. He's gone for 33 straight games and 40 another game. His last four games, Terrence Shannon has been a man on a mission for Illinois. He is a freak athlete. He's shooting the ball very well from three. They also have a, a couple kids, Coleman Hawkins, and then uh, forget the other guy, Damask, I think is his name, the freshman. who very, They're very good. So they have a three-headed monster in Illinois. I just think Iowa State, it's going to be too much for him on the defensive end. I think Iowa State has a better coach, in my opinion. Illinois' coach is still good, but Iowa State is so well coached. I think this is going to be a very close game. I am going to take Iowa State money line. So they are favored, I think, by like one and a half or two. Yeah. So I'll take the Cyclones just to win this game. Again, no one's talking about Iowa State, but these guys are winners. They're Big 12 champions. You know, they play defense, but they also can score. They got Lipsy. At the guard position, who's a dynamic freshman, they have bigs. I, I think they're going to give Illinois trouble on the boards, and I think Illinois is going to come back to earth with their shooting. Uh, it has it has to come back a little bit. And Illinois' defense is not ranked that high in the country. So you're they're betting like, Iowa State or, or just leaning? Uh, I'm betting Iowa State. Okay. I'm going to bet Iowa State. So you're I taking think. the Tar Heels on Thursday. You're taking the Tar Heels and the Cyclones, and you're passing on the other two games. Correct. Okay. All right. Let's roll into Friday. NC State Marquette. Marquette is laying six and a half. NC State's the of destiny. Man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm staying away from this game. Uh, if I had to choose, I, every time I want to say NC State, I mean, they got to be tired. They, they, they can't do it. They, got, they play five, six guys. Yeah. And they keep proving me wrong. So no read on this game whatsoever. Yeah. If I had to pick it, I, obviously I'm taking Marquette. You know, they had Kolek, who we thought was injured. It's playing was one of He's the best to watch. playing one of the best being one of the best point guards in the tournament right now with an injury so i'm definitely staying away lean marquette but nc state keep rolling man yeah i am passing but uh i'm leaning towards the wolf pack in the points i know you're stoked about this game gonzaga versus purdue man. purdue is laying five and a half what do you think about this one I am uh, going to take the Zags to cover this one. I think it's going to be back and forth. I think this is a this is an overtime field game, which is not good for the spread sometimes. I've lost a lot of games this week, last weekend, because they went to overtime and didn't cover the spread. So, but this just has an overtime feel, a rematch from pretty much a, a preseason game in Maui. We have about, I think, five, four or five teams from Maui in the Sweet 16. 
So that tournament is always like an indicator of who's going to be good. Just just so you know, for next year, I'm going to take Zags in the points. The Zags finally have a point guard in Nimhard. He had 11 assists uh, in his last game, so that frees up Nolan Hickman to get some shots up. The Zags now start three bigs. So double Edie, make him kick it out. Make Purdue beat you by shooting the three. As we know, Purdue can be very streaky. Make Braden put the pressure on Braden Smith and Fletcher Lawyer uh, to make threes on Purdue, and hopefully you keep Edie to twenty and ten. He's going to get his, but I think the Zags with Anton Watson and Graham Ek and uh, Ben Gregg, all shooter, all these big guys can shoot for Gonzaga too, and they they've been showing it. I like the Gonzaga Bulldogs to cover and maybe get a get an upset, even mm-hmm. though. This is a hard game because I like Purdue too. These are my two favorite teams in the tournament right now. Yeah, I'm very that's, I'm very excited to watch that game. I've got no feel for it, so I'm just going to pass and just enjoy the game. All right, Duke versus Houston. Interesting because if you asked us a week ago, I think you'd be laying the lumber pretty hard on Houston in this matchup. We we actually might have even said this last week that Houston just, would just beat up Duke if they if they faced them. But now Duke probably played a little better than we expected. Houston had a little more trouble than we expected. Yeah. Um, and so, do, what are you thinking now? Houston's lane four. Gosh, I, like you said a week ago, I was smashing this number at minus four. And I think I am going to take the minus four, just thinking, you know, Houston, what they've done all year. Yes, Dukes look good, but it's, you know, been against a 13 and a 12. Houston is going to match up a lot better with their guards. So, you know, McCain. Uh, Roach and Proctor have been shooting the ball well, but they've been streaky all year. And I think Roberts is just a man against Filipowski inside. I think Duke, I've been saying it all year, like Duke is soft compared to these Houston teams. So I'm leaning Houston, but man, it's make, Duke's making me question myself, especially these last two weeks. I, like, I won't be surprised if Duke reaches the Final Four. I, I really I, like, I won't. Well, that's going to be interesting when we get to the futures uh, section here because I, I like to talk about that bet in, in particular, uh, Duke's chances of getting to the Final Four. So, all right. So, But I, but I think uh, Jamal Shedd gets it done for Houston. Yeah. I, my gut tells me that it doesn't matter. You know, when you see a one seed barely survive round two, that's not necessarily indicative of how what happens after that. They, they won, so they advance. They, they get yeah. a couple days of rest. It's a new day. So I, if I had to bet, I would take Houston, I think. But I'm, but. I don't feel good enough about it. Can we talk about that that game where everybody for Houston fouled out? Did y'all did y'all stay up <laughs> I, to watch I that? I fell asleep. They had Houston had to bring up off a guy uh, from the bench that looked like Fitz, Kobe Elvin. He's only played probably in two games all year. Mm-hmm. He had to shoot free throws one and one, mm-hmm. and he was for the whole year. He was three for four. Oh god, the whole year it bricked the first one. I mean, nervous <laughs> as can be. When he made the second, I was so proud of him, and it put him it put him up for a uh, huge free throw. <laughs> what That's a huge amazing. free throw! Uh, I think this is also good for Houston. You know, going into an overtime game like this, wake them up. You wake them up, and it's a tournament game. I think they're going to be composed down the stretch in another tight game where uh, Duke might. You know, they haven't been in a close one yet. Yeah. Okay, so I have a lean on this last game. And I'm gonna see what you say. And, you, and if you're leaning the way I'm leaning, you may convince me to bet it. So Creighton is getting three points from Tennessee. Really, it's, I mean, I'm very excited about this this matchup as well. So uh, which way are you lean in here? Yeah, you got a high power offense versus a high power defense. Uh, Creighton, high power offense, probably one of the best coaches in the country. Every time there's a timeout and Creighton comes out of timeout, Creighton scoring. Watch, watch every time. There was there was a play where. Uh, Creighton drew up a play where their where their guy was sh- shooting a three and it was actually an air ball on purpose for an alley oop dunk. It was the sweet. It was awesome play. Yeah. It was awesome. You were like, you, you thought it was a shot. Yeah, the defense thought it was a shot, but Calkburner comes in yeah. and dunks it. Uh, it was it, it was a set play. Yeah. Now I really don't have a lean towards this game. This is the, this is like your Zags and Purdue. I can't wait to watch this game. I don't want to bet this game. I have futures on both teams, so just let it ride that's where my you know and I, I have a question for you about about my futures okay how to get your little driblet thing going here okay but i'm gonna let this one ride it i think tennessee they they shot the ball very poorly against texas i do think tennessee they get their offense going they brought in dalton connect he's really good 
and they play better defense than they did last year, I think Tennessee wins this game. They are favored by three. I mean, that's tough. That's a tough call. I think Creighton might be able to cover that, but I have no read whatsoever, so I know that's not going to help you. But I do think Tennessee, if they shoot better than they did against Texas, they're they're going to win this game. Yeah. Okay. Well, you didn't. I was I was leaning Creighton, and I wanted you to talk me into Creighton. Um, so what I might do in this situation then is take a Creighton alternate line, or possibly uh, pair them with another game where I have a slight lean and, and tease it, something like that. But, yeah. but I'm gonna gonna lay the lumber on on Carolina um, for sure. So, all right. Yeah, Tennessee's gonna match up very well with them. Yeah. But. God, that that's gonna be an awesome. We got game. some good games. It's an awesome weekend. game, man. It just gets me excited looking at it. Fitz. All four one seeds, all four two seeds. It's it, pretty pretty exciting weekend, folks. Let's get into sweet sixteen bets uh, at graybos dot co. You can use the promo code strategy twenty twenty three to get ten percent off any purchase, and we'll ship it to your house. Let's start with well, let, let's let's just start with what kind of bets are you looking at? Uh, now that we have this Sweet 16 remaining, what kind of futures, kind of regional plays, what are you thinking? Yeah, so my futures started at the round of 64. I like doing to reach the final four. So I have a pretty good one on UConn, which was like plus 210 to reach the final four at the start of this. Um, now they're probably, what, 200 to win it all. Uh, so I think they're uh, minus 230 to win the region. Now they're minus, so I like that a yes. lot. Uh I also had a Kentucky to reach the final four, which didn't work out. So you win some, you lose some. So hopefully Connecticut can get there and catch that. I have a lot of future. I, I usually do a lot of futures uh, preseason to win the national championship. You get a lot of good numbers if you really know these teams, who's transferring where. Definitely the, you look at the coaching as well. So I have a lot of good futures uh, to win it all coming into this. They just have to get by UConn. And they're all on that side of the bracket. I mean, I don't have anyone on UConn's side or Carolina's side, so that's why I need to ask you know how how I can make money if they don't beat UConn type of thing. I do like if you can find some numbers. I do like winning the region, yeah, as well. All right, so let's 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 do each region really quickly. Then okay. let's start in the east. UConn is minus two thirty. Iowa State plus 420, Illinois plus 600, San Diego State plus 1,200. I mean, you're passing. It's the easiest pass in the world. Same. Because uh, you can't get any value on UConn. And, no one, and you're not going to bet against them. not going to bet against them. All right. So let's go. I, I, I agree 100%. So let's go to the West. Um, Arizona is the favorite at plus 110. Carolina's plus 180. Alabama plus 410. And Clemson plus 950. Yeah. I think Arizona, I think, is going to come out of that region. Uh, but we have to fade Arizona in a lot of pools, don't we? Uh, so yeah. that's the way I think of it, too, sometimes. Yeah. So uh, I probably will pass on this, but if I were going to do it, I'd probably go with Arizona. And I could hedge that way if it doesn't work out. At least I yeah. make some money with Arizona. I just well, We're I, rooting hard for UNC. Dude. Yeah. We're rooting hard for UNC. I think I'm going to take the value, uh, the plus 180, Carolina. Yeah. Um, I've just been a little more bullish on them than the public. and so. I'll probably take that. Um, let's go to the south, where Houston's a favorite at even money. Marquette plus two hundred, Duke plus three fifty, and NC State plus fourteen hundred. I think I would go here with with the value, and I would go with uh, the, the Dukies plus three fifty. Uh, yeah, I think yeah. the Dukies get past Houston. I think they're going to do it. I think they would match up. They've seen NC State a ton. Yeah, even though they lost to them in the AC tournament. Uh, that will be a redemption game, and I think they'll get past NC State. They'll be well prepared for them. Uh, and then Marquette, they match up really well. They have guards to guard Colet. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have Filipowski. It's going to be a problem for Marquette. So you're you're basically you know betting one game there. Right. Get get by Houston. That's going to be tough. But then I, I feel really comfortable that they'll get to the final. I am uh, looking at FanDuel, and I'm guessing if you shop around, you might be able to get Duke a little better than plus 350. Maybe okay. it starts with a four. I, I like would probably it. take it. So for me, I think it's a Duke or pass there as well. And then finally, the Midwest. Purdue plus 120. Tennessee plus 210. Creighton plus 450. And Gonzaga plus 500. Yeah. 
taking zags <laughs> plus yeah. 500 come on yeah for me it's for me it's zags zags are past there yeah. as well i like that i like that I like that. all right so let's get into um futures to win it all let's do it uh, you got denny let's start with you denny okay so UConn has ticked up to plus 220. Taking that. I think I am. Yeah. Why not? Yeah, I think I'm going to take that. Um, Houston plus 550, I'm passing. Purdue plus 550, I'm passing, but thinking about it. Actually, it, it, earlier today it was at 600. 600. And so I think I would do it at 600. Yeah, that's a pretty good number. Let's see if anything else at the longer shots. Arizona plus 850. Tennessee plus 1100. Carolina's 13 to 1. That's interesting. I gotta beat UConn, obviously, on this side, but that is interesting. Yeah. Mark, I mean, I, I just believe in Carolina. I mean, I think they're a tough. Still team. no love for a one seed. Yeah, Marquette sixteen to one. Iowa State twenty to one. Duke twenty three to one. It's a good number. You like that? I do. What's who's what? What's Clemson NC State? Let's they, see. Creighton twenty three. Gonzaga twenty seven. Zaga twenty seven. No, uh, too much to go through. I mean, I have them at thirty. Yeah. Okay, Illinois thirty-two to one, Alabama thirty-six to one, San Diego State seventy-five to one. That's crazy. <laughs> that is crazy. You ready? Clemson eighty-five to one, Ooh. and then NC State one hundred twenty to one. Oh man, would you rather take NC State one hundred twenty to one to win it all, or fourteen to one to win the region? If you had to pick one, oh, I'd probably. I'd probably go 100. I'd probably go win it all. Just take, yeah, yeah. Just roll the dice. Just roll the dice. So for me, like we talked about uh, last time, preseason futures I had. So I have Tennessee and Creighton both at 30. To, I got them both 30 to 1 preseason. So they play each other. Right. So one will advance. Yep. Uh, then I have Marquette and Houston. I both got them at 22 to 1. So Houston at 22 to 1 was great. Yeah. Uh, Marquette at the time was like sweet, but. Probably could have got them better value during the season. And then I have the Zags at 30 to 1. So if the Zags win, they play Tennessee or Creighton. Marquette and Houston win, they play each other. So I have all I will have the whole side of that. Right. So how do we how do we how do we how do we cash out of that dude? So, I know one of them will go to the national championship. Right. Likely play UConn. That's if the Zags beat Purdue. Correct. Right. So Correct. you could what? Obviously, yeah. you What's, bet Purdue. Yeah. You know, Six hundred. Plus six hundred, or yeah, I would take I would take Purdue to win it all. Okay, because then if Purdue loses, you're golden. Probably not. I mean, not definite, right? Houston and Marquette still have to win, right? Right. Um, but but fav- I mean, they're favored. If you take Purdue to win it all, then you can you can certainly hedge out at some point. You can cash out. You can bet the other side, whatever. Some drib- some dribbling. Yeah, maybe put three little small bets on Purdue. And every time they win, you cash one out, something like that. Okay. Three little driblets on Purdue. Cash out. And I want that 600. Can I get it somewhere? Can I get that 600 somewhere? Yeah. I mean, was it FanDuel this morning? Was it 600? What is it now? 550? 550. Check DraftKings. So you're not, not betting wise. Are you are you just filling out the re- Sweet 16, starting fresh, filling out the bracket? Yeah. Who's getting into the lead eight? And then who's your final four? I think it's going to be. Arizona versus Carolina. I think it's going to be UConn versus, that's a coin flip for me. I guess I'll take Iowa State. Yeah. I'm going to take the Wolfpack to upset Ooh, Marquette. I like it. I like it. I'm going to take Purdue to beat the Zags. I'm going to take Houston to beat Duke and Creighton to beat Tennessee. So my final four really is what I've been saying the whole time. Um, I'm taking UConn against Carolina. And I'm taking Houston against Creighton. That's how I'm getting different as Creighton. It's Creighton, yeah. So I had, yeah, Houston. My final four when we started this was Houston, Creighton, UConn, and Arizona. And Arizona, yeah. All right. Very similar. I like it. I think I have Gonzaga over Purdue. I think I'm gonna, that's going to be my upset uh, this weekend. Okay. Well, good luck with that. Um, <laughs> he's like, good luck. <laughs> well, no, I, I, I just can't wait for that game. I think it's gonna be a great game. Um, I, week one's exciting. Week two is pretty freaking fun too, boys and girls. Just uh, soak it in, let it rain down on you. Uh, like Ryan Fitz, I mean Ryan Gosling in the Notebook. 
I get those guys confused all the time. Yeah. <clears throat> the hair, the hair. It is. That is all for today, folks. Good luck with your bets. Thanks for listening. Thanks for riding with Graybos. Be sure to tune in next time. Leave us a review. Be sure to check out graybosjiblets.com for all of our information, links to our Discord, etc. Do we have a Discord? We do. Do we Discord a lot? Okay. <laughs> um, please email us at info at graybos.co. Follow us on the gram Ooh. at graybos underscore cards, where Fitz does four pieces of content every day, like clockwork. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm just not sure about that right now. Stop by the shop located at 214 East Gray Street for now. Uh, soon to be somewhere else. We'll keep you posted there. Thanks for riding with Graybos. Giblets. Signs. Hundred dog got him beat the eyes for the hundredth time at a money line. Brock Purdy was irrelevant. Now I'm at the front like a cutting line. G5 to the power five. Grave was on fire like a summertime. I know they watching. I'ma make them sweat. Put your money down. Place your bet. Degenerate. Yeah, I'm a sicko. Who else gonna get you to the window? I know they watching. I'ma make them sweat. Put your money down, place your bets. Degenerate, yeah, I'm a sicko. Who else gonna get you to the window?